Hi, Amy. Thank you so much for being our guest speaker for the community. Thank you so much for having me. And hi, Amy, from me too. <laughs> hi to you too, Angus. <laughs> So uh, I was just saying to Amy how you'll get her formal bio uh, in the email that goes out to all of you, but uh, we I just wanted you to know that Amy, I feel like Amy's a dear friend, even though we don't spend that much time together, we have these quality experiences where we get together in our mastermind group that I was trying to think of how long you and I had been in the group, Amy, I think it's been at least five years. Is it longer? I think five, yeah, I think maybe six. It's it feels been like a long forever time. now. No. <laughs> and then Angus joined about I, three years ago. I'm just a baby. <laughs> <laughs> we let him in. <laughs> We're glad we did. I had to pass a very strict test. I know, there was a very strong hazing <laughs> Process. Serious hazing that went down. <laughs> and so I, I love, you know, Angus and I both love the work that you do, Amy, and we love who you are as a person, as a friend. And so we're just really grateful to get to hang out with you today and also to be able to share what you're seeing, what's fresh and new uh, in your world with our community. Yeah. Well, thank you. I, people love your community, I know. So I'm excited to share. Oh, thank you. Anything you want to add? No, I, I mean, yes, I think that uh, you are a very dear friend and, and that we don't spend a great deal of time together, but the time we spend together is sacred and wonderful. So. It is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so as I said before we started the recording, we'd love to just hear what's fresh and new in your world, if there's anything that you'd like to share around that, and then we can just go from there. Yeah. Yeah. Um... So there is something, I don't want to make it a thing so much, but there's <laughs> definitely a thread, a topic, a, a conversation that I've been probably beating to the ground for the people in my community and they're probably like so over it, but I'm really, really just feeling like this is so simple and it's so overlooked and, and it's really around, um, and it, it's been coming on for a while in various forms, but it's really around like just the, the aliveness and intimacy and, um, I don't know, like the, the perfection and beauty in whatever is showing up and arising right now, this very second. And I say that sort of as opposed to, a mind's concepts about how things might be down the road, how they should be, how they could be. And there's nothing wrong with that either, because even when our mind is back in how it was or how we want it to be, that's what's arising right now in this very second. But, but what I've been seeing so much, and again, my work mostly is with people with habits and anxiety is but this is for anything is just this way that our mind loves to bring us up into concepts and conversations and, and wanting to help us see something so that we can move ahead so that we can feel okay. And what's arising, but really, really, I think what that is, is like our minds very, very subtle, very sneaky little way of like, just keeping us mentally engaged and preventing us from actually feeling what's showing up. So it is the most logical, relatable thing in the world that we say, Oh, I want to explore more, you know, so that I have an easier time with this, whatever this is, so that I can see something around my habits, so that I can see something around my anxiety or my relationship issues or whatever. Beautiful. We're all for seeing things. But when seeing things is just becomes a mind trick in a sense, or a mind habit that takes us away from feeling what is right here under your nose arising right now. Well, now we're, now it's just pointless. Now it's just another bypass. It's another distraction. And that's no one's fault. I think that's just what the mind does. It is constantly wanting to just keep us engaged with it in, and it, in a protective way. You know, it's like, nope, you don't have to feel, you don't want to feel that icky feeling. Let's go have an insight about it. Let's go take a six month course and maybe you'll have an insight about it so you don't have to feel that icky feeling. When the way through everything, the way into life, everything we're looking for is in feeling what is right here, not in going and taking a course about it that will never get us we might have some insights along the way but it is a massive distraction it is the long way around the direct way is just in 
this, whatever this is. So yeah, I'm getting kind of excited about this. I know, I love it. <laughs> You know, I mean, I'm sure you guys see it too. Like, and, and now that I've sort of spotted that and it's not brand new or anything, but you know, now that that's been more on my radar, I'm just feel like I'm seeing that everywhere in conversations. It's like, oh, well, so-and-so says like, eh, there you go. It doesn't matter what so-and-so says, let's come here and feel something. And yeah. And that just feels so much more direct. Yeah. I love that you're speaking our language for sure. And it yeah. is like just the aliveness that's coming through you as you're sharing about it, that that sense of being open to life, I feel just is exciting. And it does feel bubbly and not that we feel bubbly all the time, but there's such a freedom in the simplicity of what you're sharing of simply being with what is, which means feeling what is. And of course, insight and thoughts are always going to be arising, but there's, you know, there's something about the quality of being when we're, when we're really present that it just feels different and it feels different when we're in our head. And like you're saying, it's not that it's right or wrong, but to know the difference and to know where, how to take care of ourselves, I guess. That's how I look at it for myself. It's like, I know that when I'm avoiding my feelings, on one level, I think I'm taking care of myself, but I'm not really taking care of myself in a way that yeah. allows me to be present with the energy that is actually for me, not against me, even though I might be a little scared of it in that moment. Yeah. Yeah. And, and just sometimes the best we can do, and I know we've talked about this before, you know, the best we can do is to, to be distracted by mind and that's okay. That's that's, but just to have that awareness of it to say, okay, that's, this is fine. If this is what's happening right now and I need to have a conversation or go do a thing to distract fine, but, but doing that knowingly in some way, you know, I'm like, and kind of knowing that's not getting us anywhere really. I mean, it's like, it's so simple when we feel, we start seeing, oh, okay, now this is, now I feel the fluidity of life. I feel stuff, this energy showing up and actually dissolving rather than showing up and then getting pushed down and pushed down and pushed down. Yeah. Yeah. It feels really exciting. What an incredible conversation to have. And I, and I do, you know, just speaking for myself is, is I can just see how compelling the machinery is in wanting to put yeah. form things. It's sort of, I don't know where this is going to go, but, it, it, you know, when you when you kind of look at trying to sort of give voice to your feeling, it feels like, what is it? Sort of some sort of spiritual improv or stream of consciousness speaking. It's kind of like that's a real that's a real adventure into the unknown, because my mind so often wants to sort of like get preoccupied with a sort of perfect articulation of what I'm going through rather than just to let it all out, let that feeling out, because quite often feeling is can feel overwhelming and explosive um, and, and can be a worry for people, I'm sure. So it's but it still feels the right thing to do what you're saying intuitively. It feels so on the money. Um, yeah. But I think, you know, so often people are so scared of their feelings that, that they have to somehow put it through the filter of the machinery mm -hmm. to give voice to it. But what you are yeah. suggesting, it seems, is, is like, no, just let it go and see where you end up. And yeah. We don't mean that we have to express it just because we're feeling it as well. Like, I think that's one of the um, things that people are afraid of. I know I was afraid for many years of my anger and would sort of um, find intellectual ways to try and not feel my anger because I was afraid that if I did feel it, it would come out. And yeah, sometimes it does, but it was still doing that anyway. It wasn't like I was avoiding right. it ever happening. And, and so that I think there's such freedom in recognizing that being with experience actually makes it less likely to act yeah. out from it rather than more likely to act out from it. For sure. And I think what you said, Angus, is right on what both of you are saying. Like, it's I mean, it's just so understandable and relatable that we fear this stuff and it is what's behind all habits all addictions all problems all all like anger outbursts even like you're saying we just push it down and it's going to come out either way you know so I, I i don't know this is something i'm exploring myself more too i don't know exactly how to keep leaning into and i don't think there's a how to it but i guess it just feels as simple and what i find myself talking with people about is 
is just feeling, just checking in and feeling it when it doesn't feel so huge. When someone is really afraid to feel stuff, it's like, okay, next time you're in traffic and you're just frustrated at a four on a 10 point scale, sit in that frustration. Where is it in your body? Notice the stories and memories and weird pictures that come up, like play with it there when it's a three or a four, rather than whatever it is, you know, that you're binge eating over or that you're having panic attacks over, you know, and I I think that really helps. It feels like it's just kind of building a tolerance for it in a sense. I felt like I I tried to articulate this to a client the other day and I could see they're getting all scrunchy face and not understand. (laughs) I was talking about the scrunchy face. (laughs) I thought this, so I think this is, this is so helpful because I'd love to find a better way to articulate it. But when I was, the point I was trying to make, and I think this is just because this is fresh and new for me, is that all the wisdom is in that feeling. And yet we are so well versed because of whatever trauma that maybe started this sort of fear of embracing it, that we so quickly go to, you know, to the to the, to the way that we defend ourselves or keep ourselves safe. But there is that real opportunity you now to sink into the feeling because that's where the answers are. And yet we think that, you know, we have to keep ourselves defended and, and that perhaps the answer's in the intellect when it feels just intuitively right that the answer is in the feeling, but the feeling looks so scary. I'm not going to go there. Yeah. I mean, that really is kind of the the whole essence of the issue. I think that's it so much that our mind has convinced us, the world has convinced us that the answer to whatever comfort, peace of mind is in the intellect and it's in the feeling. And the answer isn't a verbal or cognitive answer. It might be, but it may not be. It, it's like the answer really, you know, is just feeling that feeling and then this energy moves and then whatever needs to be seen is seen from there. Yeah. yeah. And then I guess that's the right use of the intellect because then we can put some form on it. Yeah. Rather than the other way around. We go to the yeah. intellect first rather than the feeling because that's kind of, I guess that's the conditioning, isn't it? Yeah. Then uh, I love that. Then, uh, then some clarity arises that maybe our mind can grasp and articulate and all of that if that's important. Um, rather than, yeah, the mind coming in as a protective defensive thing to say, to just push it away. There's just no, there's no clarity in that. Yeah. Yeah. It's reminding me of our children's preschool and what we were asked to do with them when they were in preschool. Do you remember that, Angus? Where the preschool they went to was um, all about uh, child-centered, child-led and they we were as parents encouraged to really allow them to to feel their feelings and to be mm-hmm. supportive to be close by to be attentive but to not shut the feelings down and it was pretty much the conditioning of all of the parents to mm-hmm. try and get the children to stop crying try and get the children to stop being angry like basically out of our our conditioning that we would put on ourselves we would then put that on our children to try and make them feel better and what they were trying to help us see is that they just need to feel safe while they're feeling and yeah. you can hold them, you can love them while they're feeling so that they feel safe, but you don't have to stop them from experiencing. And to me, that was just pointing to how we all have the capacity to stabilize. There is that innate wisdom inside of each one of us. And that when we learn, like you're saying in the car to just be with whatever the emotional experience is, we feel safe with it. That's what allows us to stay open to it. And so often when we were young, I mean, obviously um, I witnessed that with me and my habit of thinking, oh my God, my child's freaking out. What should I do here? That I really had to um, unlearn. And I didn't do a great job of unlearning. I did a better job of faking it rather than really unlearning it. Like I pretend to be okay with my child freaking out, but I wasn't really okay with my child freaking out. So I didn't necessarily... um, have that sense of inner safety within myself while she was upset and that was just a reflection of how unsafe that felt within me to really allow that energy to move through me and it's really just energy but in the moment it can feel really scary I think because of all that conditioning and because probably of the historical experiences of not having support having that emotional experience come up yeah yeah and it's just so innocently passed down. I'm seeing so much of that conditioning too in myself. And 
even when you think you're okay, well, I'll speak for myself. Even when I think I'm okay with their emotion, I notice it come in in like more sophisticated ways. <laughs> like, like your feelings are okay, but you're not allowed to slam a door in my house. Like, okay, well then you're not, then basically I'm saying you're not okay in what you're doing, <laughs> you know, and, but it's like, it's just so funny to see. Yeah. And, and, and I read something recently on social media. I don't, I'm not going to get it right, but essentially it was the story of a mother who had promised her daughter on the way to school today, I'm going to stop and get you a donut and this is going to be our little time. And then the daughter had some kind of meltdown and the mother's you know, like, okay, no donut for you and all of this. And then, and then she kind of had some realization and she got in the car and said, you know what, we're going to go have the donut because it's totally okay to just feel what you feel, even though maybe the kid was slamming doors or whatever. And that it's like, oh yeah, like there, you know, you just see that so much. And, and even when it looks like good parenting or like we're helping them manage it to your point, Rohini, like we don't need to help them management, manage it. All we, all we need to do is hold a space for it and make it okay. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that with that space being held, things didn't escalate to like breaking things or whatever that it actually, the thing that we're afraid. And I know you and I had probably conversations about this because Angus always felt I was a hippie parent, I think. <laughs> but that somehow our children would suffer if we didn't yeah. manage them, that they wouldn't learn good behavior, that they wouldn't learn how to self-regulate, that they would be chaotic and uncontrollable. And really, it it is, in my experience, there's definitely some of that that goes on but it's in the how you move through it with them that actually allows them to find that inner grounding within themselves. And I feel like I healed so much within myself going through that with my daughters and, and learning how to hold space for them and really meet them in their, you know, they're quite different. One really withdraws and one is really wears her heart on her sleeve. I guess they're kind of like us in that way, but like to, to just see like, oh, I'm the one that has trouble in that experience, I'm the one that yeah. shuts down because I'm scared and I'm behave like you said, in sophisticated mm -hmm. adult ways, or even like as the teenagers with them, you know, like getting all strict and rule driven, like, oh my God, that's my fear. That's mm -hmm. nothing but my fear trying to manage them and look at what it's doing to rapport, look at what it's teaching mm -hmm. them about themselves and that they can't trust themselves. And so it was, it still is an amazing journey, but I feel like there, I got to see something more along that ride and look forward to more. My greater concern at the time, and this isn't my conditioning, which is so ironic because I'm so far, so I'm, I'm so far removed from being considered an academic, <laughs> but, <laughs> but I had a client, I had a conversation with a client the other day and he's talking about his young child being in what I would call primary school, mm -hmm. um, preschool or whatever and and you know that this particular school they're really sort of all about kind of the beginnings of academics so mm. like they have to have the half the alphabet learned within I don't know a very small period of time and if it's not learned that's considered a problem and they're now worried that their kid's going to be kind of somehow yeah. going to struggle with that and so I in the back of my mind thinking well why aren't they learning their ABCs why aren't they learning the rudiments of you know with our kids with our kids right Instead, it just felt like Lord of the Flies. You know, they're just sort of it's a child-led experience. They're running around, nothing other. They're just running around all day with no school, with no sort of attempt to educate. But what obviously now I realise is that what they were educating is profound and powerful, um, and and just as powerful the parents who had conditioning that was contrary to what was being taught. Um, and I, you know, I kind of had this sense I would love to rewind the clock now and go back and do it differently because I, I kind of I guess you know I, def I definitely picked a lot of it up but a lot of it could have kind of sunk in in a different way from this level of understanding um, but it was about you know allowing them to have their feelings and, and that was the sort of whole purpose of the school it's like there would be these points in the day where they'd have their feelings and then everyone well, they wouldn't make them happy. No, but things would happen. It's because right. it's Lord of the Flies. It's like, you know, things kind of fall into each other and have a problem. And then <laughs> and then the then the adults would rally around and 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 help them negotiate that problem where they were allowed to express themselves in a very healthy way, rather than, oh, that's bad. Which is <laughs> kind of like how I grew up. That's bad. Come <laughs> and have your feelings. 
when you know in this environment it was the complete polar opposite which now looking back it was kind of wonderful but at the time it just didn't tally with my conditioning yeah <laughs> on some level it did because they got to go there they did you yeah say, no way <laughs> well you pick your battles don't you <laughs> <laughs> we digress amy into our marital <laughs> you guys work that out later <laughs> exactly we'll do this offline <laughs> we'll heal with the trauma of preschool later. <laughs> well, no i now i'm saying you're absolutely right i know i'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah so and the, it's what you're saying in in terms of the simplicity of it 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 does feel like wow that's it but the amount of conditioning that we have in general, I know for myself, it's, it doesn't mean that it's easy. Like I know that it feels right when I'm able to do it. And, and that sneakiness of how I separate myself out from my experience. And it's so often so invisible. Like I was just thinking about when I'm irritable with Angus, so, you know, it's like, I look at relationship stuff a lot because we work a lot in that area. And I think about our relationship and I can see when I'm getting critical with you, Angus, or if I'm snappy or just not being kind, I'm not really in touch with my emotional experience in that moment. It's, it is a defense mechanism that allows me to dissipate whatever the emotional energy is, not in a very nice way, not in an effective way, but I don't, often I'm getting better, but in the past, I didn't even realize that's what I was doing. I didn't even realize I wasn't present, didn't realize I was discharging because it wasn't like I was yelling at you, but I can see now there's, there is a difference, which you've told me for years, there's a difference that I'm able to actually see now that, oh yeah, that's just the way that I've learned to cope and to not feel my feelings and to discharge the energy unconsciously. Yeah. And that is it's hurt it can be hurtful in the relationship if angus takes it personally but it's not good for me either yeah so yeah exactly so how how what do you guys see around i want to say how we do this although you know i know that there's and i and i i know it's like everything it's it happens intuitively and it is in a you know i don't think there's a lot of words we can put around it i think i think it we well, I mean, I don't know, but it feels like there's a awareness of this. There's a leaning in and a willingness and, I, and it helps me anyway to go into my body and feel it physically, if only because that takes me a little bit away from my head at the moment. Um, I know you guys have been doing a lot with breath work and different things. So I'm curious. Yeah. Like, what do you see around that? If someone is really like, no, I don't want to feel that. And you feel that big wall up. How would you help them through that? Oh, you gonna start? I can. Well, I, I think that, that, that for me, um, I think I, I kind of, I guess for me, I, I would probably maybe share a reference point that how, how I've seen things have helped me in that respect. So, and I think this is relatively new for me in a way where, um, and, and, and talking about our, you know, maybe our unique dynamic. I think that Rohini would get uh, on at times. I might say something insensitive or or, or, or do something stupid, <laughs> and she might get impatient. Um, and my my reaction to that was always to sort of meet that impatience with anger, and then I, you know, and then we kind of be off to the races. And at some point, it occurred to me that that always ends up in a bad place and that it became a it became a situation where I'm you know that never seems to bear any reasonable fruit what am I going to do and I start to sort of ask myself my question what am I going to do because I certainly don't want to scream and shout because that never goes anywhere good so it just suddenly occurred to me it's like just to feel the feeling <laughs> I don't know you know it just occurred to me to do that what else am I going to do am I either going to scream and shout or I'll feel the feeling instead and in feeling the feeling, I just immediately went to somewhere tender. It, it, I did feel like kind of that wounded child who had a rageaholic dad who was really impatient. Um, and it was kind of like a moment where I felt like I had this insight. Oh, that's all that's happening here. Something has been stirred up in me. It's reminding me of my dad. Yeah. Um, and, and, and Rohini has many beautiful qualities that, you know, remind me of my mom, who was really kind. But then all of a sudden, I'm married to my dad. And, you know, <laughs> but I was never aware of that. And, and, and in the moment, because I wasn't aware of that, I'd come out, you know, all guns are blazing and, and, and want to do battle. 
But that for me was kind of a defining moment because it helped me see, wow, I went to the feeling and there was some real gold there. Yes. Um, and, and that changed the landscape for me significantly. And now I kind of apply that to other parts of my life. But I can share that story with a client as an illustration of like, yeah, you know, to me, I feel like the gold is in the feeling. Yeah. It's, it's not to be found into the intellect and the intellect will just just act out spontaneously based on a trauma that I never really got to first base with it because I would always just act out. I wouldn't feel the feeling where all the wisdom that would, would emerge is, is going to be available to me. So that's, yeah. that, that's how I would go. And I the would healing happens naturally. There isn't anything the healing to happens do. Naturally, yeah. The feeling of that, that pain is healing and just being able to be with it in a way that you weren't able to be with it yeah. in a younger, at a younger time. And that was really surprising to me because it kind of like allowed me to segue from well, you know, I guess I hadn't even got, I mean, there was an initial impulse to sort of fight back, but I thought, oh, I'm not going to do that. I'll try something different. I'll go to the feeling. Um, mm -hmm. And then it felt like it got tender very quickly rather than like wanting to sort of, you know, to, to, to sort of have that emotion rally around the old conditioning and the old approach. And that, mm -hmm. that for me was really helpful. Insightful. And I'll speak to sort of my side of Angus's experience, and I want to answer in terms of clients as well. But what I think in relationships, it's so amazing how there's that ripple effect or a domino effect when Angus sees something like that and his behavior changes. I feel that. And I think that that's had an impact on me because when he would go into his anger so quickly, that would strengthen my defenses, I wouldn't be meaning to do that, but very unconsciously it would remind me of my historical experience and remind me of my mom who was, you know, very angry when I was little. And, and I learned to, you know, just kind of tough it up. You know, I, I learned to, um, you know, just defend myself and, and be able to just sort of have this wall of armor on myself to stay safe. And so that's what would happen if, I would sort of be dysregulated and a snap at Angus. He would then, all, you know, in the past come back and it was always felt like a, an extra level to it, which didn't sort of meet me where I was at. It was like this extra, like, I'm going to stamp you down, it felt like. And so then I would just react. And then, as he said, it wouldn't go anywhere. But when he had that insight and I felt his tenderness, it allowed me to feel my own hurt in a way that I hadn't felt it before. And I don't know how or why like because I didn't do anything it just happened where I was also able to have more self-compassion for how scary it was for me that he would like even as an adult I wasn't feeling scared like the defense mechanism that I had didn't allow me to feel the fear and yeah. it wasn't like there was anything real to be afraid of it wasn't like I was in danger but underneath that I was really scared because of my historical experiences. And so that allowed me to have greater tenderness with myself and to meet myself in that fear. And that, you know, shift, it, it continues to shift. Like there's been pivotal moments where I feel like we've shifted that, that dynamic in our relationship and it keeps getting deeper. Like, I feel like even just recently, we had an experience where we both just, we're even more vulnerable than we've been with each other before. And, you know, that it just kind of keeps deepening and opening up. And so it feels like that's infinite and beautiful in the unfolding. And then we kind of reach a plateau, I guess, and then something else happens and we go a little deeper with it. But that I, that's what, how I love relationships, how they teach us things and how we learn. And without teaching, just by being in relationship, we learn being in the experience of it and, and witnessing and experiencing and feeling the love and vulnerability just seems to draw that out more from each other. And, you know, I don't know if I did anything to help you or if that was just an insight, but I feel like the intentionality of our relationship does create a container that allows for healing mm -hmm. now, mm -hmm. more so than before. Yeah. And then in terms of clients, it's like, it's funny when you were saying that I was, I had these thoughts, like a lot of people will say to me, they end up crying in their sessions with me and they don't cry in other parts of their life. And I was like, what am I doing? Like, why is that happening? I actually had one client sort of say, you know, I just come here and cry with you, Rohini. <laughs> and, and it made me think about like, I'm not trying to make them cry, but they're just connecting with their experience. Yeah. And I feel like just 
being present and mm-hmm. listening and being compassionate. Like it isn't that hard really yeah. for people to drop into, even if they may have some defenses, just being able to be present and listen with an open heart, see their psychological innocence. Often the defenses come down and people drop into their experience, even if they're feeling pretty defended about it. Yeah. And if they're really resistant, then I think it just takes time. It's about building rapport and trust in the relationship. And then as that gets established, then it feels safer for them to actually just feel what's going on underneath their uh, coping mechanisms. I mean, the fact that all of this resistance to feeling is all just based on fear and and it's all a defense mechanism anyway, it makes perfect sense that when someone feels safe, it just melts. And I love that too. I love when people cry. (laughs) I love it. I mean, it does, it feels like it's the iceberg because we all just start building this iceberg around our heart because we don't want to get hurt. And it's like the tears are just that iceberg melting. It's so great when that happens. I wish I could cry more often than I, I mean, I'm like, you know, I can cry, but I love, like, I see someone crying, like, oh, that's awesome. Like, it just feels good, you know, and you know that you're touching something or that they're touching into something. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah. it is. It's beautiful. It is feels like a a real honor to hold space for someone who's able to just feel that level of safety and connect with themselves in that way. Yeah. And, And it's, it is always pointing to how we have everything we need inside of ourselves. I, the healing yeah. happens. It happens spontaneously. It happens when we're ready. I think it's healthy when it's when we're not crying because we're not in the space to feel. It's not the right time to feel that we yeah. have the wisdom to know how to take care of ourselves in situations where we don't feel safe to to cry. And and I think with our relationship, like that was one of the things that was so impactful for me at the beginning is how even though I behaved in ways that I'm you know embarrassed about now but I actually really was able to express my emotions with you and you didn't abandon me and I think that I had never expected that to be possible and it's not that I want to have to behave in the ways that I did but it was incredibly profoundly healing for me that you didn't Mm. leave me and Mm. say I can't deal with this you're crazy which I was (laughs) you know but that was all my defenses yeah. Underneath it was just the the hurt and the fear of abandonment. And that's, and this is all very psychological in terms of we think about traditional psychology. It's like I was doing everything to push Angus away, right? Like it would have made sense for him to abandon me given how I was behaving. Yeah. You were obviously a little crazy that you didn't leave me. Yeah. But it's like you see how we, you know, innocently reenact these things, trying to keep ourselves safe, but we're actually doing the absolute opposite of what we genuinely want and need but it's the best that we can do at those times i think there's something so huge too and kind of what you're saying around um i see this happen a lot i'm sure you guys do too where like people come into this conversation and they reach some level of recognizing their health or healing or whatever and and then often there's like another kind of whoosh that comes through where they're like, they feel completely, you know, ungrounded and what's going on here. And I always see that as kind of similar to what you said. It's like, well, this is coming up. It it didn't feel safe to come up before. And I think kind of back to the kid thing, I always, my kids were always like just perfect angels at school, but then they'd come home and just be a wreck. And we're like, what the heck? Like, (laughs) you know, but then someone said to me once, well, they feel safe to be themselves at home. That's great. That's, that's good that this is happening. I had never seen it that way before, but you know, I mean, that really is beautiful. And just so for everyone listening to this to kind of see, cause I know that throws people for a loop. They're like, Oh, I saw this and I was great. And I was feeling so peaceful. And now I'm hit with this second wave or third wave of stuff. Like, yeah, because that's always been wanting to come up and be seen and it just wasn't, you weren't ready for it. Yeah. I I love that. And I, I absolutely see that. And I love the iceberg melting away. It's like that iceberg melts a little bit and you feel amazing. Then all of a sudden it's like, whoa. I'm going to feel this too. (laughs) What did I open up here? And then that gets normal and you feel safe with it. And and then there's going to be another level. That's okay. There's no problem with it, but for a mind that made up a theory that said, oh, this is my new normal. And no, there's no new normal ever. (laughs) There's never a normal, a new anything. Like it's just, it's all so fluid, but you know, we get hooked into those ideas and then we think we've gone backward and all the, all the stories. 
Yeah, no, that's a really good point because people can get very confused in that way and think that they're not making progress when actually I see that as tremendous progress, like you're saying, that there's real healing happening. They're feeling more. They've got more access to their emotional range, but they're thinking, oh no, it's a bad thing when really there's just more aliveness coming through them, more yeah. open to that intelligence behind life and yeah we're gonna feel more and that's why I love our metaphor of rewilding because it, I feel like it captures it because it's wild to be human like when we let that energy in us it's like whoa this is quite a big deal it's not just zen and yeah. peace although that could be part of it mm -hmm. yeah. yeah yeah because it is the management of the feeling we're probably most of the time not even conscious that we're doing yeah, that. yeah that's the crazy part of yeah. it I've heard people who work in grief. I have a couple coaches who work in grief and they, and they talk about how grief like is, you know, it's not just all excruciating. I mean, it's like full aliveness in a yeah. sense. And just talking about that experience of feeling so completely ripped open to everything. And, you know, I, I mean, I think that just makes so much sense. There's sadness, but there's also huge love and gratitude and um, yeah, it's all of it. Yeah, yeah, that that sometimes in grief, there's such an exquisite presence that isn't there. There's such a gratitude that can come forward. Yeah, yeah. well, it kind of, it, it must break through the filter that, you mm -hmm. know, that you've been trying to yeah. hold your shit together for so many years. And, and yeah. this is maybe just one thing that pushes you over the edge. Yeah. I always think of it, there was a period in London where um, there was a, um, there was a, there was a disaster, a boat disaster where it affected a lot of people and we lost a lot of friends and there were a lot of memorials and this is in the fashion industry in London in the 80s. And I will never forget going to those funerals and just, you know, in the fashion industry, you would think that there was probably, it, I guess I could be forgiven for thinking or describing that there were quite a lot of uh, I want to it sounds so judgmental to say there were a lot of there was a lot of pretension let us say you know in terms of how people would show up and and how they would deport themselves but all of those filters just like evaporated at those funerals everybody was so real and honest yeah it was such a beautiful as tragic as it was it was a beautiful experience to see people come together and drop the mask and be real and I think it's Grief is just probably one of those things that just shatters that 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 mask that we feel like we all have to wear to keep ourselves sane. Yeah, it's kind of why hitting a bottom, in a sense, whatever that means, is so beautiful. Also, you know, I mean, working with people with, as you do too, habits and addictions and all of that, it's almost the opposite of what you're saying. It's like we're in this habit to keep us in this narrow little range that feels safe. Now, it doesn't do it all that well because we're still suffering, but it, but it for sure feels like it shrinks the range of experience. You know, you start to feel too much, go do your habit. Feel too little, go do your habit. And yeah, so when, when there's just something that shatters that open often, just like hitting a bottom or someone leaves because of your addiction or whatever, it's beautiful. Cause now you're out of that tiny, narrow little yeah. range. Yeah. There's real freedom in that hitting, you know, what they call hitting bottom where you're like, okay, I give up. Let me just see what yeah. happens when I don't try and manage myself. Cause it's exhausting. Yeah. yeah. The only way is up from there. Yeah. <laughs> bounce back that happens yeah oh uh, amy this has just been so much fun i love that um you're seeing i know that you've seen this but you're seeing it in a deeper way and and the simplicity that you share it with i i just resonate so much with the way that you speak to it and see it in the depth that you do because i can feel that as as you're speaking to it and so i'm excited to share with this share this with our community yeah, mm -hmm. I think it's brilliant. It's certainly something that sort of feels like it's starting to emerge for me as as a as a as a thing to talk about. Um, and and I and I and I still, you know, other than just trying to sort of go to my own story, it's it's still an interesting thing to talk about. And even as I say, you know, like the other day, I was trying to share this, and the client look, client looked all scrunchy faced and wasn't understanding it. So, but I think it's a really important thing to to to, to sort of to take a look at and, and, and help people move in that direction. Yeah. I, I think too, especially when people are saying I've tried everything, I've tried everything. It's like, Oh no, you, we haven't tried this. So like you said it so many times, Angus, in this conversation, the wisdom is in the feeling almost always if we, and I'm saying this, cause I know this resonates with a lot of people. We we've studied everything, taken every course, we've tried everything, but that's all a big up here distraction. 
innocently it is. And we haven't, what we haven't tried is feeling what's showing up. When we do that, there's no, no other class you have to take or book you have to read. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. Amazing. yeah. And it's that internal safety. Like I'm thinking back to when I had an insight, my first sort of big insight with this understanding, I remember so much emotion came up inside of me so many tears because I just was able to feel the the freedom but also the feelings of um, like not the idea of anxiety but the actual fear of anxiety like in a different way mm-hmm. and that I could in in the in the safety of that moment I was able to feel it and experience it differently and know that I was safe so it wasn't that the anxiety or insecurity went away. It was that I just felt safe enough to feel it. And that felt amazing. Like, it sounds kind of crazy, but it did it, like that felt amazing to be able to feel all of it and feel yes. totally safe and feeling all of it. And I knew in that moment how I had been going in the wrong direction because I had just been trying to get rid of the experience. Yeah. I've been working so hard for so many years to not feel it. And the answer was, oh, just feel safe enough to feel it and you're okay. Yes, yes. That's really what it's about. That's yeah. huge. Yeah. 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 And that is so freedom. Good. Think about it. I mean, if you feel okay to feel anything that might ever arise in your life, like where are you pris- imprisoned at all? You're not. There's no problem. Yeah. 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 It feels like our intellect builds this great big seawall to protect this mm-hmm. wave of feeling that's yeah. gonna, you know, ultimately going to be very refreshing and 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 helpful but, yeah 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 the fear is of it and the yeah. effort that we don't even realize that we put into that seawall like it just takes so much effort to protect ourselves from feeling and that was why I was so exhausted because I was just working so hard to not yeah. have that happen yeah and then realizing like oh it's actually fine. I'm fine. And oh I guess God. that is the exquisite <laughs> relief, isn't it? It's suddenly that wall comes down. You're like you've spent years trying to manage it and keep, yes. it, keep it sturdy. And, and it takes a lot of bandwidth. Yeah. It's suddenly let that yeah. go. Yeah. Amazing. Wow. Yeah. Well, I think this is a beautiful encouragement for everyone to just see what it's like to drop into their experience, whatever the feeling might be, and, and to, to recognize that there is safety to do that and that the safety is important that we want to know that we're we're safe to do that and the more that we recognize that the easier it will be to just allow experience to arise and go as it does naturally yeah wow well anything else amy may feel like this is a lot and i'm really um thrilled and look forward to seeing how the community responds but if there's anything else you want to finish up with let us know No, just thanks for having me i love this i love that it's such a open conversation and um yeah i mean it just this just this whole topic this whole conversation it's kind of like well, of course, of course, it was going to be simpler than we thought it was. <laughs> That's always the answer, right? It's like, oh, I have to do all these things. And I know for the three of us and probably everyone in your community, that's what we keep seeing over and over. Like, oh, yeah, no, I'm actually, it's more okay. And it's simpler and it's closer to home than my mind ever fathomed. So it's just so fitting that this is too. Like, duh, what were we thinking? <laughs> Well, well, thank you so much. And we look forward to seeing you in person in not too long. Yeah. I know. Awesome. To thank you guys. Thanks, right. Amy. Lots of love, Amy. Love you. Take thank care. You. Bye. 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 <laughs>